Happy Thursday, boys and girls. My name is Jeffrey Scott Mitchell coming to you live on Memorex from a remote location. No, <laughs> from an undisclosed location, default route. My question today is, why in American politics are we voting for personalities? Why is it about Donald Trump and Kamala Harris and not about the policies that they represent. If I had to vote, if I had to vote, I would vote policy. Which policies of the parties align with my core values, ideology, or beliefs? It wouldn't matter if a convicted felon was the personality of that party or someone who just seems to be a figurehead and really have no real conviction or stand on anything or who has ever really said anything poignant as far as I've heard. Something sharp and cutting that would distinguish her from every other politician that's ever existed in American politics. She stays generic, she stays bland. You ask her a question about telephone poles, she's gonna tell you a story about why Donald Trump is so bad. She does it very well too. Mr. Trump, ex-president Trump, He's just bombastic, confident. He just don't give a f It comes off that way. But a lot of people are saying that's just the character he's playing. And I guess he believes it's working for him. The polls, some of the polls say it is. In fact, he got elected president previously. Suggest that also. But to think that he is dumb and ignorant is a mistake. It has to be. Because this man made it to be president of the United States. I think it would be wise and to look into how all that happened and the role and part he played in it. That in itself is a feat, a major accomplishment. Anybody who, do that, who does that, I don't think can be called dumb and stupid <laughs> or ignorant even. There was a debate between Ben Shapiro and Sam Harris on, I think it was called the focal point, the focus point. The FP something that Ben Shapiro and Sam Harris may be my two favorite debaters or opinionists or ideologists, the way they talk, the way they come at subjects. Mr. Shapiro can talk kind of fast sometimes, but he's sharp, he's cutting, both of them. I like that, and when I saw a podcast, a two and a half hour podcast, where it was them two against each other, and the topic was Trump or Harris, I was like, oh my God. I watched it, it was good. Sam Harris is, is probably my favorite, one of my favorite podcast people, one of my favorite personalities in that. And even he, I think, has been compromised Wait. to the Trump derangement syndrome. I even think I just got a message, political message from Ohio Democrats. They must have got my number somehow. Spam message. Um, 
So even Sam Harris seems to be compromised with the Trump derangement syndrome. And I'm like, wow, man. You know, you, I look to him to be like a steadfast foundation of understanding and thought and to not be affected by certain things. But they got to him and to the point that he was just every other word he talked about was about Trump and even he admitted it. And in the debate between them two, what I did notice was that Sam Harris spoke an awful lot. It got to the point where I was like, Sam Harris is speaking a lot. And Ben Shapiro barely got words in. And I guess it might just been their style. Now it was good listening to Mr. Harris, I like listening to him, I like the, the logic he puts together, the anecdotes, the points he tries to make, the angles he comes at. But he was just going on and on and on. You know, the logic was there, his logic is still solid. You know, he said he can criticize the left. You know, just he agrees with Mr. Shapiro on some of the criticisms of the left, this and that. But the bottom line, steadfastness, steadfastness, for Mr. Harris was Trump is not fit to be president and that's to put him mildly. He thinks Trump is the worst person on the face of the earth. It's like if he believed in the devil, Trump would be the devil or at least a high ranking lieutenant spawn. He's just completely obsessed with Donald Trump in a very negative way. And Ben Shapiro even agreed. You know, Trump is bombastic, Trump is obnoxious, Trump is this, Trump is that. But there'll be guardrails in place. And he's basically saying that he's voting policy. The ideals of the Republican Party are more important than who leads it. And I very much agree with that. Because if I did have to vote, I would have to vote Republican because I'm not for forgiving student debt. I'm not for giving things away. Free money, free everything. Transgender, gender stuff. Not that I'm against all the LBGPQ alphabet people. I'm like 2% of the population. Why is it making so much noise? Why is it such a big issue? Just let, just let it go. Just let it be. I mean, it's like, okay, they won. They're in. They won. We can just let it go now. But they keep harping on it. And even the right is there is out here about how They say Kamala Harris wants to give men in jail transgender surgeries and the whatnot. I don't know if that's true or not. But it's a point, it seems it's a major political slant. You know, do you want to vote for somebody who wants to give sex changes to men in jail? You want to pay for that? It's part of our politics. I basically could care less either way. It just bugs me that it's in my face every 10 minutes. And I could, I definitely blame the left for that. And that's kind of what I mean. A liberal kind of thinking. Free drugs, and I'm over, you know, generalizing and I'm overdoing it. And free drugs, free everything. No accountability. Sanctuary cities. Feed the homeless. Blah, 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 rehabilitation. Spend money on this. You know, like Kamala Harris talking about just giving black businesses $50,000. 
Why are black businesses? You know why? Because that race card is working for them right now. It's working with white people. It's working with black people. It's the cool thing to be. The cool thing to be is to be pro-black right now. Even if you're white. Everybody's doing it. It's almost like a, it's definitely a cult. Or a, a fad. Yeah, I think. It's like a fad. To where all the hip kids are doing it. And it's working. It's definitely working. I can see it trending. Well, I don't know if it's, yeah, it's definitely trending. Too many people respond in that vein on my Facebook news feed. It's on TV. Well, TV can be manipulated. The left-wing media, and I do believe it's a left-leaning media, everybody pretty much agrees that. Of course, they'll say, well, you got Fox News. Yeah, you got one station. But the rest is left. That could be a facade that the left has built to make us believe that everybody wants it and likes it. Because it's all that fuck you see. Mixed couples, interracial couples, women in every position. And the only time you see a white male, and I've said this so many times before, and it, the trend just continues. It's just, it gets, it gets to me more and more aggravating. As I look up, <laughs> all the roles of male or female. I was doing a security training. It was all female. CEO, CFO, and then it was a black male. And the first time you saw a white male, he literally was the villain. Literally was a criminal. Literally. I think it's too much. I understand it. It's been 50, 60 years of television. All you saw on TV was white males being dominated. I mean, white dominating males. White males was running the show, that's for sure. I agree to see a little bit of diversity on TV is good. I think the trend, maybe this is a good way to put it, I think the trend was happening naturally and now it's been hyper accelerated and that part is disturbing and annoying to me. I think the trend was naturally happening and then the George Floyd stuff happened the pandemic happened and now it's just hyper accelerated and it's it's too much there's going to be a pushback the pendulum is going to swing because it's too much it's too much but people see it seems to have an appeal people are buying into it i'd just be happy to see a good old fight between two white men <laughs> again good old traditional white male testosterone John Wayne western type battle struggle that movie be remade <laughs> you have gay men in there black females <laughs> and you rarely see the black a black person being the villain <laughs> you don't even see a black person being a criminal anymore on TV they're just trying to erase that stereotype and I also think that that might be false I know it's false because there are black criminals there are black criminals and not only that they're black people who brag about being black criminals in their music and in their lifestyle. But yet every time you see a black male on TV, he's a victim of some kind of circumstance. Even if he robbed somebody and shot him, he's a victim of the system. It's not his fault. 
And you basically don't see black females at all. You'll see them interjected every now and then. But not as much as you see a black male in positions with the white female. And when you do see a black female, usually an interracial couple or a mixed couple, to the point that they would they even have the uh uh they have the uh child mixed. <laughs> You'd be like a black female, a white male, and a mulatto swirl, or whatever you want to call it. The child, the, officer, the person playing the child of the family would be properly mixed <laughs> color. Yeah, I'm not for that. I just feel like leave it alone. And this could be just a ploy on the right to compensate from that. Even though, you know, for, for maybe a hundred years, they, they profited from it being all white even if they were racist. You don't, you could be have pride in your culture. You could have pride in your race and not be racist, as long as you're not white. If you're white, there's are certain things you just can't say. Oh, I forgot, I got this thing on turning on six. That's why I'm so loud. I forgot to turn it down. If it's white, there's just certain things you just can't say. You can't say, I love being white. You can't say, I love my culture. You can't say, I love mayonnaise. You can't say, I love raisins in my potato salad. You can't say that. And I think that's not fair. I, don't, I think that's not how we get to the equality or equilibrium or the, the, the equalness that the left wants to get to. I think the pendulum is swung way too far and it's going to have to swing back and we're going to have to endure that. And we will. And then it'll settle someplace. And maybe that's the way we humans, quote unquote, have to do it. Maybe we have to swing between the extremes to see, to find the middle. And that's cool. See, I say all that because that's how I picture the left. That's, that's the, the feeling the left has, and Democrats leave in my mind. I may be, I may not have looked into the right as deeply as I should because it's not, it's too difficult because they're not on TV. Every time you turn the TV on, you see left. You got to seek out right-wing politics or right-wing ideas and ideology. You gotta actively search. See, yeah, see, yeah, I think I was even, remember before when I was walking and 10 o'clock, 10 o'clock train came and I was walking back. I was walking the other way that I am now because I was leaving later. I left early today. Today I, I set the thing up, set my alarm to get up early for whatever reason. I got up like before nine o'clock. I think I was out of there by like 9.08 or something. Something like that. Where before I was like leaving at 9.20 or something. I still get back in time, you know, to do what I need to do. But, so now I'll be when, at 10 o'clock when the train comes, I'll be past it like I usually am. So that's where I'm at. And I even, you know, I, I, try, I do try to seek out some of the right wing Republican policies and ideas and listen to, you know, their people and their general plan. And I just agree with it. I think, I, my sentiment is that I agree with it. It just seems there are ideas for the economy and the budget and all that. You know, align more with my ideals. And it could be flat out, and I even admit and say it, it could be, yeah, well, you got yours. You don't care about 
anybody else. That very possibly could be true. That very possibly could be true. And it doesn't make it right or wrong. Only in your idea, only in your subjective opinion is that right or wrong. Ooh. And that's okay, that's the way it's supposed to be. In your subjective opinion, you can be for or against the principles of my ideology and that's fair, fundamental even. Hell, I think it's part of it. It's necessary. Um, in fact, I think it's probably, it's probably even impossible not to do that. <laughs> it's probably impossible not to be subjective in your thinking. Blah, 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 blah. So, what was I saying? I was saying about the ideals of public. And that's just the way, you know, I, I align. That's just, you know, about, and, oh, because, so I got mine. Yeah, you got yours. So you don't care about anybody else. And I think that's fair and valid. I think that's fair. And it works. True. I don't see anything. I'm not ashamed of that. Because. Uh, now see, I could say that if I didn't have mine, how would I feel? If I didn't have, now see, I have to question that. If I didn't have mine, how would I feel? Because it's definitely a part of my personality that shifted once I became accomplished. Not so much financially, but in other parts of my life. Philosophically, and when I, the atheism thing, once atheism became somewhat mainstream or a part of the conversation, I was cool, I wasn't hating on religious people. So it could be a natural human thing to be, to act like a liberal and want to, and be hating on what other people got and want to take it from them, equality, if you don't have yours. And that will go right along with the victimization, victimhood aspect that goes along with the victimhood aspect of what goes along with being a Republican. And, and quite frankly, to being black. I just saw a text to one of the family chats from my daughter. The granddaughter woke up and asked to use the potty. And, and I guess she went and peed. And they all excited. <laughs> My daughter excited. Last night, I guess she used the potty to poop. And it was a video, of course. My daughter took a video. And you could hear it. And she was gonna send it <laughs> to us. So I was like, I'm cool. I'll take your word for it. That's how much they love that. That's how much they love that thing. I tell her every time too. The problem is with them, they love you too much. You better watch out for that. 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock now. Where's the train? I think it was 10.02 last time. I was running late. Train is running late. Still not back there, see? Still not there. 10 o'clock. Where's it at? Anyway. And also, you know, as far as they say, Trump got inheritance, he got this money from his father, you know. It definitely could be said that I inherited certain things, a good foundation, family, 
Definitely monetary inheritance, significant. You help me. <laughs> but that's part of my lineage. My lineage earned that. That wasn't just given to me. That was built, fought for, maintained. It didn't happen on accident. What I received and what I passed down <clears throat> didn't happen on accident. Thinking about granddaughter on the potty, <laughs> pooping it. <laughs> that would be a big one. If, if her potty training was that easy, <clears throat> that would be a big one. That would be a big one. Considering we still trying to get her off that damn pacifier. <laughs> and she could give us potty training. That would be nice. But I'll say anything about granddaughter. I'll say it too. Granddaughter's perfect. Granddaughter's perfect. It's us who, I don't want to say aren't doing our job, but it's us who give in and to the behavior. It's us who allow whatever inconsistency that she, and inconsistency me just simply means something that we subjectively and personally agree with or don't agree with. Purely subjective, you know, who knows? Any type of behavior that we can. Oh, it's Halloween. Oh, happy Halloween. Oh. I'm seeing the text coming in from the family chat. Happy Halloween. Yay. Yeah, for his granddaughter, I mean, she pretty much responds to whatever, you know, we put on her. So it's hard to kind of like blame her for anything. We train her up, she responds accordingly. It's almost like she wants to please us. But she has, you know, an internal desire and personality that sometimes, and a lot of energy, <laughs> that sometimes it's hard to battle. And I don't ever second guess, well, I may question and second guess, but I really don't put any point of emphasis on anything that the people on the front line do or don't do. I'm not there on the front line, I don't know. I'm not there with that child day to day, every day, 24 hours a day. Who knows, I'd be probably a different person if I was. She'd probably wear me down too. Where I'd be like, here, let's take the damn bottle. You know, let's take the damn bottle and go somewhere. Here, take the pacifier, leave me alone. You know, not to that degree, but kind of like that. Right? They just get to a point where you just got to give in. Their will versus your will. And they got a lot more energy than you do. And they ain't got no job. <laughs> they ain't got nothing to do but that. <laughs> Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. Yeah, so if I had to vote, and the way I should the way I should vote, and what I should do is study the referendums, study the politics, and then cast my vote. Now, when I evolve to do that, I would feel a lot better about voting. But right now, if I was to vote, it would just be blind. It'd just be just to just to be doing it because everybody else is doing it. Just to be doing it because you know, they say you're supposed to. And you ask somebody, you know, what's the big deal about voting? And they, I really haven't gotten a satisfactory answer. It's your right. Okay, I got a right to do a lot of stuff. That doesn't mean I want to do them. You know, your forefathers died so you can vote. Good. <laughs> now I can. They succeeded. I don't have to. They, they, they decide so that I could vote. And I can now, so hey, I celebrate that by not voting. But I know mainstream people, from day one you're taught to vote. It's important, it's this, it's that. It's just 
stamped on people's brains and their thinking. And I get it. I get it. But, yeah, I got all the voting materials at home, too. I got all of it. Should have brought it with me. Maybe study. Actually, I get it online. It doesn't matter. I can get it online. So it don't matter. <clears throat> yeah, I think I gotta call Spectrum for my mother. Get rid of her cable box. She don't use it. Got to negotiate a deal with them people. Only thing she needs is internet. And she got a landline phone. She need that, so. And she got a bundle. My sister said she got a bundle. Comes out cheaper or whatever. You know how they do it. But anyway, happy Halloween, people. Like your day is coming out. Election Day is coming up, and we should be ready for it. November 5th. Wait. Wait. Be ready for whatever. It's going to be Wait. November 6th. Wait. Whoever wins, whichever way it goes. The excitement, maybe the media has hyped it up. And if they have, I'm buying into Wait. it. And I'll probably hype it up. I'm going to hype it up and promote it and ride with the whole mania, hysteria, and just the whole, you know, over dramatization and hype of it all. And that's what we do in America. And I love it. Especially here in California. It's all about a good story. <laughs> story ain't gotta be true or not. Story just gotta be true-ish. There has to be some semblance of truth to it. Don't have to be completely true. Just a little bit. All it has to do, all it has to really do is to be entertaining. Entertaining is the only thing it really has to do. I just said that because I was walking by somebody and I kind of went into performance mode. You know, you don't see me walking by here. Trying to act like you don't see me. Yeah, when you walk out here, you gotta watch yourself. You gotta watch yourself. Anyhow. Swinging on y'all two times. For me, for the funk. And for the American political system in which we perfectly, in which we perfect, in which we imperfectly perfect human beings have created. I love it. And for every elementary particle that existed in any atom in this or in any universe that ever was, is, or will be. A totality of it all. Theory of universe. Hypothesis of all as one. My name is Jeff.